it's always very exciting when Magnus Carlsen takes on a young talent because Magnus is the best player in the world while Vincent could be said to be one of the most talented European players right now. He is already rated about 27-30 and is Germany's brightest young star since Emmanuel Lasker. And Vincent plays his bishop out to e7. If you see, as compared to the normal lines of the Rui Lopez, what is different here is that Magnus has developed his knight to c3. And this is not very common. <clears throat> now, Magnus plays his pawn to a3, making square for the bishop to run away when the knight attacks it. And Vincent goes bishop g4. And he tells Magnus that I am going to put pressure here in the center. But Magnus kicks the bishop away, takes and jumps in with the knight. Now you might imagine that this is a great trade-off for black. Because now white's pawn structure is a bit mangled up here. But it seems like Magnus has studied this position well. And feels that he has a small edge. And I would say that this small edge is because the C file is open. And because that file is open, the C pawn can become a bit weak. Let's see how Magnus makes use of this very small edge. First, he chops the pawn. After takes, the space in the center is equalized. But now you see him putting his queen here and saying that the C6 pawn is very slightly weak. Vincent, unperturbed, plays his queen to D7 and he's found a good spot for his queen to be placed on the E6 square. A4, very interesting move. As you can see, Vincent understands that this is a weak pawn and defends it. Magnus starts piling up on the C file. And now Vincent plays his queen to E6. The other rook comes to the D file. Magnus does have a very small little pressure. And Vincent is being calm. He's not pushing his pawn here to B4 because that would weaken the C4 square. Magnus voluntarily moves his knight away. And after rook p8, what will he do? He first plays his knight to d2 and just controls everything, defends the pawn. Vincent now goes on his journey. He wants maybe his knight or bishop to come out to the g5 square. So Magnus stops it. And Vincent comes out with the knight. And here Magnus takes with the bishop, creating a very interesting imbalance. Because after bishop takes bishop, you will see Magnus now has the knight. Vincent has the bishop. Magnus can take the bishop. But instead, in order to play for a win, he goes rook b1. Now look at the time on the clock. Magnus has close to 14 minutes. He's just used one minute on the clock while Vincent has already used 10 minutes. And he's down to three minutes here. That could become a big issue. So Magnus not just playing on the board, but also with the clock time there. And now, instead of doubling on the d-file, he plays rook c3, putting pressure. Vincent comes up rook b6. Now pawn takes pawn. Wow, what's happening here? Because cb5, oh, he takes with the rook, putting pressure here. It was also possible to take with the pawn here, which was a fine move. But takes rook d1. Vincent starts putting pressure on the b3 pawn. But you can see that the knight plans to come here on d2. But... Vincent has his move ready. He goes a4 with 2 minutes 53 seconds. He's speeding up. Magnus jumps with his knight. It's going to be mass trade on b3. Rook takes. Rook takes. I think Vincent must take it here. He's thinking whether he should take with the pawn. He takes with the pawn. Rook takes. And now can keep the rook with rook d8. And which seems like a decent move to make. But also you can trade. Now, after the trade has been done, look at this position. Queen knight versus queen bishop. And this is known as the Capablanca's rule. Capablanca used to say that the queen and knight function better than the queen and bishop because a knight moves differently than the queen. Now, queen d6 offering a trade. He takes, knight takes, attacking here the pawn, bishop d8. If you take here, bishop c7 traps the knight. And so... Magnus goes knight c8. He's enjoying himself because the knight is superior to the bishop here. The very simple reason is because this pawn on e5 limits the bishop. So Magnus goes knight a7, pushing the pawn, knight c6, 
attacking the e5 pawn. How do you defend it? He goes bishop c7. And now a check on e7 coming to the central square would be very cool. He gives a check. King comes up. It's time for white to activate his own king. Yes, king f1, good move. If you play king here, then there's a check. So he goes bishop d6. This is a mistake because knight f5 is the winning move here. Bishop f8 and then you bring your king up, knight e3. But Magnus misses it. He goes knight d5. And Vincent is back in the game with f5. Good move there because he needed some space for his sort of pieces to move. White goes king e2. And now Vincent takes the pawn and Magnus can slowly move upwards. He's still better. And let's say after king e3, knight c3, knight e4, he would be better. King f5 comes to defend the pawn in the center of the board. And g4 play, that is a rash move because Magnus could have very easily built his position. And you can see there Magnus so unhappy with what he's done. He's like, be patient, king h4, now the h3 pawn is weak. Why did I have to hurry so much? Because think about it. He could have moved his knight back to c3. He could have captured the pawn on e4. And there you see his Magnus has such high standards for himself that he is so upset. Now there's no chance to win because the black king is coming in on h4 and is going to take away all the winning chances that white had of course it wasn't winning per se the position but magnus thought he had such amazing chances which have now been squandered also the fact that he had nine minutes and vincent only had 40 seconds would have played a major role if magnus was accurate and i think practically magnus just felt that he was in the driver's seat but now actually he's going to lose a pawn and it's vincent who's going to press a bit it feels Knight e3 and you can see that Vincent now knows that the worst is over, that his position is defendable. If you take on e5, then I take on, then maybe I hit you with the bishop and then take the pawn on g4. So he goes b3 and now, oh, by the way, there was bishop f6 and taking on b2, but bishop g5 and now Magnus plays his knight, pawn push forward. If you take with the king, I take your pawn so he goes knight d6 and vincent pushes forward is there any chance for vincent to win this he's pawn up but somehow the white king is very very active and i think that doesn't give vincent any realistic chances to win but still um, magnus has to remain careful he goes king e4 he's being careful there making his move and now where does the bishop go for vincent keimer he goes bishop d4 and now the king comes to f3 to defend the pawn on g4. g6 played by Vincent. He wants to create a passer here on h5. So Magnus goes knight to f7, hitting the pawn and bishop g7 is played. Because if you had pushed the pawn, then checks would have come on the g5 square. So bishop g7 played and now Magnus goes knight d8 threatening maybe knight e6 to attack the bishop and the pawn he goes bishop f8 now knight to f7 king h4 and king f4 he plays his bishop up king goes back you can see here black is struggling to make some progress and Vincent's time is also going down. He's down to 20 seconds. Finally, a trade happens. And he takes with the king, keeping the G pawn. Well, Vincent is trying his level best to put Magnus under pressure. But Magnus knows that his knight can handle the queen side. His king can handle the king side. So everything is under control. 94 played. Now pawn pushes forward. Knight check. King comes back. He brings his king up. And that is quite a solid fortress now that Magnus Carlsen has managed to build. He goes and attacks. Bishop comes back. Knight to c3. And with this, the players repeat the moves. And I think this should be a draw. Okay, Magnus should be definitely ready for a draw. He's pawned down while Vincent is thinking if there's 
anything else he can do to press here. His main problem is even if he starts to bring his king from this side, white can simply sack this knight for the pawn and pick up this pawn as well. And it is just a draw. So Vincent, after putting in some thought, he has 20 seconds left. He goes bishop d4, offers a draw and the players agree for it. Magnus, of course, really um, pressed hard there. And it is a good concept there, taking the doubled pawns on the b-file and then putting pressure on the c-file, which is something that was very subtle. But I think Magnus had studied it back at home and he knew that there was some venom in it. And he tried it against Vincent Keimer. The battle between the experience and youth ends in a draw. But what an interesting game it was filled with many, many learnings. Also shows us what high level of standards Magnus Carlsen has created for himself. The way in which he got upset when he missed that one small little move in the endgame was something that we all can learn from.